Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and we're here to look at another Linux distribution. This one is Neptune version 3.3 of 7 OS. And without further ado, here we go. Let me just close on out VLC here. Neptune 3.3 was a request by one of my subscribers that I take a look at it. It is based off of Debian. I believe it has some mixed packages between the Wheezy and SID repositories. Just a quick look here at their web page. They have the new kernel of 3.10.12, which as I say new kernel, the next time you guys watch that you'll probably be like, oh, we're up to 4.23 or something like that. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, this has KDE 4.11.2, which is new because I think I have only been using 4.10.5 and didn't even know that they'd gone to 4.11. And they've done a few little things here, removing some software. They have increased the version of Chromium to version 29, VLC to 2.1. They've done, they do have a couple interesting packages here and there. But first, let's talk about installation. When I tried to download Neptune 3.3, it was terrible. I'm not sure if the servers were having problems or what was going on, but I was lucky to be able to get download speeds between 30k and 50-60k. It probably took 6 or 7 hours to download the 1.8 gig ISO and I'm used to a 1.8 gig ISO taking me no more than 7 to 12 minutes I did try a couple different things though as you see here in the upgrade notice it talks about upgrading Neptune 3.1 or 3.2 to 3.3 by performing normal system updates I did think maybe I could do that so by going into the downloads area here I was able to look at what was available for download and that's actually not where I was getting Neptune. Let me get back into 3.3 .3 here. Down here in the download area here there we go. Now I'm not sure if there was an issue and maybe this wasn't there before when I was doing this. It just had, just had the primary server and that's what was taking me forever but I did get it downloaded eventually. In the meantime, I also tried to do the torrent, but it's only at 3.1. Now, when I installed 3.1, I could see some quirks and issues there that are not in 3.3, but after updates and doing the normal update, it pretty much got most everything up to what should have been 3.3. Now, what you're looking at here is 3.3. I eventually did get it downloaded. It took me just a little bit longer than I would have liked and then I got it running and it's been working really well. I really like Neptune or Sveven's OS's install. It's very simple, very matter of fact, you know, four or five screens, asks you a few simple questions, what partition you want it to go on, etc. and it installs without too much issue and I like that. You know, you don't have to complicate the installation process. You don't have any, it's choice is nice, but when you're just installing it, it's just good that it works and it's wonderful and it's clear. Another thing that I really like about this particular distribution is it's really refreshing when a distro starts up and you can see that they took some time to customize their wallpaper to give you know those little nuances that make the distro their own and you don't just look at stock KDE or stock GNOME or stock XFCE. It's kind of nice that they put in that little bit of extra effort instead of hearing the standard little noise that pops up when you first log in. They've kind of customized even their, their login sound and I think that's kind of nice to have that. I think that's a uniqueness that they give to their distro that says that we care a little bit more than just throwing out something that's plain just everything that you see worth everything else. Now 
Also with uh, 7 OS, they have customized a few applications. So if we switch over to the other desktop here, you know, the first thing I did, of course, was say, hey, where's Synaptics? Where do I go ahead and get my applications from? And I found the Muon Package Manager. And that's always important, I think, that instead of going and grabbing sometimes the packages that you're used to always seeing, look first to see if they have created something that's special to their distro. Now, the Muon Package Manager is very easy to use. wasn't that difficult to find things inside here. It's, it's very much mirrored after Synaptics and works really well. Another thing that I noticed that stands out Neptune from the rest is that they have their own little hardware manager. Now it was interesting because I'm always wanting to see what people do and I have of course a NVIDIA graphics card here and if we click on here it actually detects that I've got the NVIDIA Corporation GT216 GE Force GT230 and it, has, it gives me the opportunity then to install the proprietary drivers. Now to be honest, I've kind of grown used to the Nouveau drivers and I don't play a lot of Steam games or things that require those proprietary type drivers, although someday I might change because there are some interesting games on Steam, especially now that they're supporting more and more Linux and, and uh, open source type operating systems. But for now, I just stick to the Novu, and I'm happy with that. If we go back in the printer's area, it immediately detected, and I'm not sure if it detected this or if it just found these, because I don't have an HP printer on my network. No, no, don't. I had a Samsung CLP300 at one time that I used for a long time. It worked really great, and the problem is that the drum needs to be replaced, and the cost of the drum is more expensive than it would be just to buy a, a simple inexpensive laser printer nowadays. So I do have a brother printer and I think I've mentioned it a couple times that I've got a brother HL2280 and it has a scanner built into it and this is laser and of course it doesn't have the drivers that automatically get installed when you install Brother software. Now I was a little disappointed that well if this is proprietary maybe it can detect my HL2280DW and install those. It got everything that I think that I've ever always seen all other distributions grab for Brother and install. And I don't give it dings or, or, or marks about that because yeah, it is what it is and no other distro has ever found that either. I've found that I just have to manually always install those extra drivers from Brother's website and then I can get it to work. Although the issue with that is I run 64-bit OS and I believe their drivers are 32-bit OS so I have to do a few simple quick fixes to make them work and then they're good to go. Another feature that I really like about Neptune and Caddy mentioned this in I think a previous Zevin OS um, distro review and that is that they use Lance a lot for their application menu I am okay with the kicker, but sometimes it's neat just to have something else as long as it's usable and works well. And I find Lancelot to be nice, easy, simple. I use nice a lot, don't I? It's so nice. <laughs> I don't mean, I need to get work some more adjectives into my, my uh, speech, I guess. <laughs> Lancelot does a good job. I like how it organizes things. It's a little bit more sophisticated than the kicker. There are very few things that Lancelot will not do. Now, if I digress here, one of the comments made in one of the last videos in my Gen 2 and reviews where I was talking about news articles and eSelect, they had mentioned, why do I have two kickers or two menu items. I had one over here and one over here. Now, Lancelot does a lot of stuff very well. I'm very happy with it. Unfortunately, if you use saved profiles instead of using an empty profile or something like that, 
In the kicker menu, you can go to the quit screen and there is the save current session. Inside of Lancelot, there is no save current session and I have not found anywhere else other than in the kicker menu can you save your current session. And therefore, I have two menus. The one on the right side of my Gen 2 box is the kicker menu that everybody's known for. And I throw it up there if I think I might be wanting to save my current session and leave it there. Sometimes I forget about it. And I use the main, the main one on the left side, which is, of course, for Lancelot. But that answers the question why I have two menu application launchers in my Gen 2. And it's completely unrelated, of course, to this video. But I was thinking about it and, and some of the limitations, like I said, that Lancelot has over the kicker. And I think that's one of the only limitations that it may have. If you don't save your sessions and you always open a new session or an empty session, you'll never have to worry about that problem. But I do like this Lance a lot. And it's very simple if you want to mess around with that sort of thing. You know, if you were to unlock the widgets, go into the Add Widgets area for KDE, you can find, for instance, that the kicker is available. I'm not sure if it's labeled kicker. I guess maybe not. But it's in there. You know, the there we go, Application Launcher Menu. You can place this. This is the one your standard that you're probably used to always seeing, and it's available. And then, of course, you've got the basic launcher menu as well. So that you, well, actually, this is the the one that you're gonna see that you get normally. And then this is, of course, the traditional menu. But you can switch back and forth between these once you install one. And then, of course, Lancelot. If you were ever wanting to change it on there, you can just do a search on it. And here's the Lancelot launcher which is what you're seeing here. It's a nice launcher, it has some neat features, a little bit more cleaner, uh, or a little bit more clean than, say, the kicker. Sometimes it's not so much that I like things to just to be different for the sake of being different, they have to function as well. And I think Lancelot does a good job. And I'm glad that Neptune brings Lancelot to the table here and gives you a few choices. Now, as to some of the other stuff here, very simple. They are running an, a newer version of LibreOffice. They're running a late, the latest version, of course, like I mentioned, of VLC. And KDE is phenomenal with their newest version, 4.11.2. So they have brought in some things, like I said, from SID that are still technically in testing, but are stable enough to throw forth. And like I said, too, when I first threw on 3.1, because I could grab it as a torrent and download it much faster and throw it on there. Just try it out. I could see some of the bugs that they talked about that they fixed in 3.3. .3. And it was kind of nice just to go ahead and grab 3.3 .3 because it had some of the settings already configured. Because, like it said in their main page, if we go back here yeah, and back one here, it talks about how in the upgrade that you have to enable certain repositories to go ahead and get the newest version of the KDE Plasma workspace and also the newest version of LibreOffice. That's not too hard to do, but sometimes I want to make sure if I'm going to do a review that I'm not doing something like throwing something old, updating it to what should be, unless it's a rolling release that's constantly doing that, and, and then it's okay. But in this particular case, I just wanted to make sure this is what you should see if you get the 3.3. Now, other than that, everything else about it is quite simple. We were looking at those menus here. Um, like I said, Office was giving you the latest version there. They do have your typical KDE stuff for utilities. Same thing for settings. And, of course, QD4 I had to install so I could use my simple screen recorder. Simple screen recorder. GIMP came with it automatically. Chromium, of course, was version 29, VLC in the multimedia area. It came with a couple games, card games, um, K Patience, and other card games, for instance. And I am not too sure what Hedge Wars are. I haven't really looked at that, but it came with that as well. Maybe I will before I go on to my next review, just to take a quick gander at that. Well, thank you very much for watching this particular review. I will be looking at my next Gen 2 in review for next Wednesday, 
and I do have a list of requests and it's getting kind of long so I do apologize to everybody I've got at least four or five more requests for different uh, distribution reviews and I don't have that handy just yet because it's in my Gen 2 partition and of course we're in my guest OS so I will be getting to everybody I will be getting to those you know if you're fourth on the list for instance that's gonna take four weeks till I get to you because I'm only gonna do one of these a week and and I, I I still am on track for 52 and 52 weeks so that's going well but I just want you to know that if you don't see your distribution right away and if you're wondering feel free to give me a, a drop a line or something like that so I can can tell you well you're third on the list or you're coming up I do try as I get to your reviews or your requests to give you another sh you know send out that hey it's coming up it's next week I'm be looking at this coming forward and, and or going forward that sort of thing so just to let you know you know, I want to make sure that anybody who wants me to look at a specific distribution that uh, I will do it no matter whether it's my cup of tea or not we'll look at it I will try to give it a good honest opinion you know most of my reviews sometimes I spatter on about things that aren't even about the distribution because just things that they remind me of or or, or something that that works well with the distribution you know, sometimes it's more about just the chat and the, the rambling than it is the distro but uh, I do appreciate all the comments and reviews and everything that you all have to say about uh, these things you guys have been great I've really appreciated all of the subscribing that's been going on I hope to continue doing this I hope to get more in depth with my Gen 2 reviews I have a couple more and then I'm going to be delving into Gen 2 installation and I know that I'm not really looking forward to because it can be quite in depth and I think the main thing about Gen 2 is when you run with Gen 2 you're going to get it all and you're gonna really understand all the nuts and bolts you understand what it's like to get underneath the kitchen sink when you work with Gen 2 and I really want to do it fair a fair challenge here and go with each chapter discuss it and then eventually do the whole okay skip my blah 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 and just go right into let's install it let's do this and you can have an idea of how to get Gen 2 installed although I will tell you there are some other Gen 2 websites and YouTube videos out there about how to get Gen 2 installed it's just it's one thing just to follow what someone's doing it's another thing to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it so I hope that the method I decide to go with this works well for you guys and I hope I can get to it here hopefully in in November or so again thanks a lot for watching thanks for your comments if it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having enjoy it thank you again we'll chat with you all later have a good whatever it is <laughs> bye